Hello folks, Mick from Flow Mountain Bike here. We are testing out the brand new Santa Cruz Heckler, Santa Cruz's very first e-mountain bike. Big news because Santa Cruz is releasing its first ever e-mountain bike, which is a big deal for a brand that up until now has said that it wouldn't make an e-mountain bike. There are a few reasons for that and we've gone into a load of detail in a first look story on flowmountainbike.com. If you want more details on this bike, including the first ride review, go to the website, check that out. But needless to say, there's gonna be a huge amount of demand for this bike. We think it's gonna be pretty damn popular because up until now, Santa Cruz hasn't had an e-mountain bike and that is of course a market that is growing and growing every single day. Before we go any further, perhaps we can talk a little bit about the name. A heckler. A um, lot of uh, older, old school retro tragics like myself would remember the name Heckler. Uh, it's been revived in a completely different format. The Heckler was a fairly cool pioneering bike in the mid 90s and on a single pivot aluminium sort of free ridey bike. Uh, otherwise, this that's where the resemblance stop. Two wheels. Otherwise, this is a completely different beast, the old Heckler. But it's good to see the name come back and they didn't go for um, sort of a dorky name like the E Bronson or something because that is effectively what the uh, the Heckler's based around, the, the Bronson. Certainly Santa Cruz could have called it the E Bronson because there are a lot of similarities between this and the naturally aspirated version. Uh, it's rolling on 27.5 inch wheels. Uh, we have a 160 millimeter travel fork on the front with a 65.5 degree head angle. And on the back we have 150 millimeters of travel. And just like the Bronson, it's the lower link VPP layout. So rather than the shock mounting underneath the top tube and driven by the upper link, it's placed lower down in the frame and driven by the lower link. And this is a layout that we didn't anticipate that Santa Cruz would choose for an e-mountain bike. Because obviously you've got the battery and the motor down there. There's a lot of stuff going on in that part of the frame around the crank and bottom bracket. So the fact that they've been able to fit the shock down there, which is driven by the lower link and a motor, and clearance for a water bowl in the mainframe and quite short chain stays. They're 445 millimeters on this bike, which is pretty short for an e-bike. Certainly. It's really yeah. impressive, huh? And and the, the frame shape itself, I think, um, given that all of that is going on, Santa Cruz has done a really good job of keeping this bike quite clean and pretty tidy um, as far as features are concerned. And uh, very gimmick free, which is nice. So less of the adjustability we've seen in some other Santa Cruz models. Mm -hmm. uh, no, the, no dropout flip chip, there's no geometry flip chip in the rear shock mount. Keeps pretty simple yep. uh, relative to being able to adjust those. Uh, we would like to see that geometry adjustment, but perhaps there are some other reasons behind why Santa Cruz has not put those adjustments onto the Heckler. Uh, Mick, do you want to talk a little bit about the battery and motor that we've got on this bike? Yeah, yeah. So uh, we we're always very curious of what battery motor system Santa Cruz would choose for the first e-bike, and they've gone for Shimano using the Shimano E8000 motor system and their 504 watt hour battery. So it is a internal battery, removable, so it is a full powered, full battery range e-mountain bike. The battery itself uh, is removable from the frame as you mentioned, you just need a 4mm allen key um, and it unlocks from the top and you can pull it up from out from uh, the down tube. Um, and it's also got this kind of thick armor plate mm. underneath it, hey. It's using, it's the same carbon as the main frame, so it's, I guess it forms some part of a structural uh, part of the frame and also a lot of protection for the for the battery itself. Mm -hmm. um, having immovable batteries poses all sorts of benefits if you're charging your battery off the bike or if you uh, want to travel without a battery in your bike for various reasons. Super easy to remove, where we're seeing a lot of bikes integrating the, the battery to the frame for weight and, and uh, sort of geometry purposes, the Santa Cruz have done a very good job just to still make it um, easy, to, easy to use with a removable system. Now the Heckler is going to be available in four spec levels for 2020. Uh, all of them will be built around the same CC carbon fibre frame. Santa Cruz isn't going to be doing alloy with the Heckler. They're not even going to be doing the cheaper C carbon. It's only the premium CC carbon option. Uh, there are five frame sizes, which yeah. I think is worth touching on because Santa Cruz is going to be doing an extra, extra large in the Heckler. And that's a big deal because carbon moulds mm. aren't cheap. And we think as well as providing more size options and less gaps between each frame size, which is great from a 
fit perspective, you can choose exactly the right frame size. If you're borderline, you've got a couple of options. Um, but it does show a certain commitment to this bike, and we think it's a bit of a clue that Santa Cruz is expecting this bike to be very, very popular. Um, now, as far as those build kits go, uh, if you're expecting a Santa Cruz e-bike to be expensive, uh, you picked it. <laughs> <laughs> this bike, uh, we wouldn't describe it as being particularly cheap. The top of the range model, $19,999. That comes with XX1 access, admittedly, to add another couple of batteries to the bike. Yeah. Um, and also the reserve carbon wheels. There's also an X01 build. Uh, for a bit over 18 grand, there is a GX build, which is called the S build. And then we've got this model here. This is the Heckler CCR. The entry level price on this, $12,999. Um, so Mick, perhaps we can talk about this bike here, which uh, we've been riding for the past week. Yeah. This is the base model in a size large and it tipped the scales at 21.54 kilos, which is very impressive for a model of this uh, spec level even though it is it is not cheap and in a size large so it, it is definitely throwing out um, a strong message that the frame mm -hmm. is a very light frame mm -hmm. on its own so yeah we've been using this one it's been really good it's got the uh, RockShox Yari fork RockShox Super Deluxe rear shock we, we, the drivetrain is a SRAM NX with a single click shifter the SRAM Guide RE brake which, which have been fantastic super powerful brake We've got some WTB rims on SRAM hubs. All of the Heckler models are coming with exactly the same tyre. So that's the Maxxis Minion DHR2 with the XO Plus casing, yeah. which is which is which is a fairly mid mid weight sort of tyre. A lot of people might want to look at a heavier casing or a, a tubeless insert in the rear wheel if you're a heavy rider on rockier terrain. But yeah, it's been been great for us. On on the know the tyres, these are 2.6 inches wide, mm. but there is clearance in the back end of the Heckler to run up to a 2.8 inch, a genuine plus tyre, yeah. if, you, if you would like to. As far as the actual ride quality on this bike goes, how did it stand out to you? What, what, what did you like and what didn't you like about the way that the, the Heckler rides? I'm a massive fan of 27 and a half inch bikes in general. I find them so much fun to ride and the agility is unrivaled uh, when, it, when you compare to 29. The Heckler built around a smaller diameter 27 and a half inch wheels and a fairly sort of compact chainstay length and fairly moderate numbers. The bike feels really agile and very, very um, maneuverable for an e-bike and a bike of 21 and a half kilos. Like it's um, instantly I was transferring from one side of the trail to the other and lifting over things, jumping over logs versus plowing into them and holding on. It was, it was, it was a fun bike to, to ride and promoted a bit more of a lively and fun, um, keep saying the word fun. Yeah, it was just a, it was just a fun and, and light-hearted feeling bike compared to a lot of the trail bike 29ers that are coming out, so. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, e-bikes, they, they, they have a lot of weight and they, and they get a lot of stability and momentum from the weight, so having a 275 wheel on an e-bike compared to a trail bike is, is not necessarily a bad thing. It's, a, it's, it's, it's refreshing to find a 275 um, bike to ride because, yeah, I just really enjoy the feel of them. Yeah, because yeah. a, a lot of e-bikes are going for 29-inch yeah. wheels, and Santa Cruz did say that quite specifically, that because of that inbuilt stability, there's just more weight on this bike, so it does give it more stability on the descents anyway. They wanted to make sure it was still nimble and mm. agile, which is why they went for those 27.5-inch wheels. And also, I think the, the lower link VPP suspension design has a lot to do with that as yes, well. Yeah. It's a more progressive suspension rate, so that does give it more bottom out support, but it also gives it a more supple initial feel and more mid-stroke kind of support. Yeah. So that kind of lends to that feel too, huh? This one just wants to sort of get a bit more airborne and um, yeah, it promotes a bit more of a hooligan sort of riding style. And yeah, it's, it's, a, it's been a whole lot of fun. Um, how would you say it compares to other e-mountain bikes on the market that are sort of a similar style to this? Yeah, certainly if you're comparing to other 27 and a half inch wheel bikes, the big thing here is the chainstay is significantly shorter than we're seeing on say the Giant Rain or the Trek Powerfly. Mm -hmm. um, 445 versus 470, 470-ish, that's a, that's a big difference. So there's a lot more bike behind you to kind of like, to manage. So to have this bike, um, you know, feeling a bit more peppy, yeah, it, it, it's, um, it's a big difference. Another thing that really stood out to me is how, has how quiet the suspension uh, and the ride feels. 
you know, when you're descending, slapping the bike really hard, there's not a sound to be had, and it just really grips the grips the ground and feels very um, supple and, and smooth. The um, the Heckler suspension has a really good uh, balance between having super supple, comfortable, and a lot of traction, but also a lot of support to push off and and um, stop you from feeling a bit overwhelmed when things get a bit hectic. I was just feeling comfortable straight away. I think if you if you look at the spec versus the price, you're going to feel a little bit unsure about things. An NX drivetrain and some of these sort of Rockshox Yari fork do stand out to be as being quite a low spec for the price. Yeah, I mean if we're not a if, problem. If I mean yeah, I mean if we're comparing directly with the competition, the top of the range Merida E160 is still quite a bit cheaper than this but comes with Fox factory suspension, yes. DT carbon wheels, so it is a different price point, but then Santa Cruz bikes have always played at that upper end of the price spectrum, really. It reflects their regular bikes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. And I mean, looking at the details on this bike, it is really well engineered. It's a really nice, nicely put together bike. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got lovely pivot hardware on here. That's the, the traditional lock and collet hardware that Santa Cruz uses for its pivots. Um, everything is put together really well. The way that they've been able to fit the rear shock through that seat tube tunnel, um, keep everything nice and compact around there, um, very nicely finished. While you're down there as well, um, that's one little thing, one little feature we quite yeah. like, isn't it? Yeah, a lot of the Shimano e-bikes have the, you know, the power button up top right in front of you here, but Santa Cruz tuck it away down here below the rear shock and it's, um, yeah, it's a nice little feature. Keeps, it, keeps the bike feeling a little bit less e-bikey, but yeah, still can turn it on. <laughs> <laughs> on the Shimano system, this system has, has, has proven itself to be of high worth in the e-mountain e bike world. Um, it's, it's very easy to understand, it's in a lot of models, it's, a, it's, it's spec on a lot of bikes, mm -hmm. it's available uh, support in a lot of bike stores. Mm -hmm. The um, eTube app on your phone gives you some adjustability to some of the power modes. Mm -hmm. It's um, and it's Shimano, so you know it's going to be hanging around, and it's a it's a quality brand. It's it's a known quantity. Yes, exactly. And the motor itself is relatively compact. It's also got standard crank Q factor, so you mm. don't end up sort of riding like a cowboy. It's kind of a yeah. it's exactly the same as a regular XT crank too. But as far as the performance on the trail relative to other motors on the market? Yeah, there's, it's a hot, hotly contested segment at the moment. The, the, the steps, um, while it's on, you know, on paper, it's small, it's light, um, it's easy to understand and use. Yeah, it does lack a little bit of that sort of grunt when pushed hard. Um, and at that high RPM, when you're really spinning to get up a, a step up, you can feel the power sort of not keep up with your... Um, um, your sort of power and that's mainly in comparison with say the new generation Bosch the um, the Levo the specialized lever with the Broza motor the drive is super quiet and the engagement is quiet but it does wear a little bit more than perhaps other Shimano motors say the Merida is, feels a lot quieter than this mm -hmm. when the RPMs get a bit higher I think maybe is that something to do with the, the the lightweight acoustics in the frame or something, yeah, but yeah. whether you can just hear the hear more of the noise because it's resonating through the frame. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 So, if you want to know more information about Santa Cruz Heckler, make sure you go to flowmountainbike.com. We have a full news story about this bike as well as mixed first ride review on the Santa Cruz Heckler. That's right. And if you like this video and like other videos we do, please. Uh, give us a subscribe and a thumbs up and stay in tune for more videos coming your way. Alright, otherwise that's it from us. Thank you folks. Toodaroo! <laughs>